Hello everybody, in today's video, I'm going to teach you how to install the B6D system. The letter D here stands for this one, the first letter of dry cooler. And of course, we have a B6 tank inside to hold six miners inside. Always remember to check the appearance of a wooden box and also the appearance of this dry cooler. And if you have got any questions or if you found any damage, please do not hesitate to contact us. Okay. Now let's start. In addition to the dry cooler you receive, we also provide our customers with two 5 meter long rubber hoses and a water curtain. Next, let's have a detailed look at each part of the dry cooler. First, let's focus on the dry cooler's fans. The dry cooler is composed of two fans, each with a diameter 500 mm, and the two fans share the same junction box. As you can see here, these two one-inch thread connectors are the external interface of the dry cooler. The coolant inlet lies lower, while the higher one is the fluid outlet. The water curtain of the dry cooler has already been installed by default for customers where the temperature rises above 35 degrees Celsius, 95 Fahrenheit in summer. Or customers who want to overclock, it can enhance the cooling effort. If the temperature is lower than 30 degrees Celsius, 86 degrees Fahrenheit all year round, and overclocking is not intended, you can remove the pre-installed water curtain. This is the liquid inlet of the water curtain. There is an automatic water stop valve in it. Just connect the tap water, and the valve will automatically shut off when the water curtain gets enough water. This is a sewage outlet of the water curtain, which is usually kept closed. You can do the maintenance of the water curtain periodically, and use it to release the dirty water after a long time run. This is the water storage tank, which can store the circulating water of the water curtain. This is the overflow port of the water tank, which will overflow when the water volume exceeds the predetermined liquid level. This is a water pump's power cord, which needs to be connected to 220 volts power supply. The working principle of the whole set of B6D Ultra is not complicated. It operates in a single loop circulator mode. There is no heat exchanger in the pipeline, and coolant run through all the pipelines from beginning to the end, compared with some other double loop designs. The single loop design is much simpler, thus far more user friendly for individuals to deploy at home or in office, and there is no heat exchange loss, so the heat dissipation efficiency will be higher. This is a more advanced design tailored for decentralized mining. Before the assembling of the pipelines, first we need to decide the location for the dry cooler. That's because once deployed, it is not easy to move afterwards. The dry cooler should be placed in a cool and ventilated area, avoiding direct sunlight, at least 0.6 meters away from any objects, such as the walls, etc. The distance between the dry cooler and the tank should be less than 5 meters, or else you should order a longer pipeline, which is not included in a standard package. If you want to put a dry cooler and a tank, not on the same horizontal level. The height difference should be less than 3 meters, or else the heat dissipation efficiency will be affected. Adjust the inclination angle of the fan to less than 3 degrees or minus 3 degrees. If the inclination is too large, the liquid in the water curtain will spill out. If the ground is uneven, it needs to be hardened in advance. Next, let's fix the dry cooler. There are six fixing holes at the bottom of the dry cooler. We must use expansion screws to fix it on the ground to ensure that the fine will not fall over. Then take out the natural gaskets and rubber pipes and put the gaskets into the pipe joints. Connect the pipe joints to the B6 tank and the dry cooler respectively. The right side is the inlet of the coolant circulation, and the left side is the outlet. Study this picture carefully to avoid a reverse connection. A hole with a diameter of 50 cm is required for the oil pipe to pass through the wall. A nitro gasket must be used at the joints, otherwise there will be leakage, and there is no need to use raw material tapes. The connector must be tightened. Avoid large bends in the tubing. Next, connect the water pipe to the water inlet of the water curtain to fill it. 
Remember to cover the sewage outlet and overflow port to prevent the water from leaking out. Then connect the power cord of the water pump to the 220 water supply and turn on the water circulation. We'll see the cold water gradually wet the entire water curtain. If the water curtain splashes, turn off the red valve to drain the water away. If the volume of the water curtain is not enough, turn down the right valve. Nearly finished. Now please power the dry cooler. The dry cooler requires a three-phase power supply of 380 volts, 60 hertz. Single-phase power is also acceptable if you use a power converter. When we open the junction box on the side of the dry cooler, we'll see the terminal posts to connect the three-phase power. When finishing the wiring, power on check the dry cooler functions. An optional VFD is suggested. If you want to adjust the fine speed and cooling capacity, this can also help to reduce the power consumption if you're in a climate with a huge temperature difference between winters and summers. Recommended model 280 volts, 2.2 kilowatts, 60 hertz. If you want to know how a VFD dynamically adjusts fine speed, check out the VFD speed regulation tutorial on our homepage. Now we have finished installation of the V6 Ultra Dry Cooler here. And it's time for us to go inside to set the V6 tank. Let's go! Now it's time for the V6 tank. But before that, we need some tools. Next, we check the list of the accessories. In the wooden box, you see eight nitro pads, mainly for the insulation of joints. In addition, it is equipped with 12 minor handles, which can be installed where the original file of the mining rig is located. Moreover, there are 12 C20 to C13 adapter plugs, of which both C20 and C13 miners can use. After placing the tank, open the right side top cover, locate five power terminals, three for live, one for neutral, and one for ground. The B6 tank requires a three phase, 380 volts, 50 or 60 hertz power cable, including three live wires, one neutral wire, and one ground wire. The selected cable should match the minus load, and if you want to overclock, the load should be greater than 36 kilowatts. We connect the cable from the front panel in the hole to the tank. After wearing according to the requirements, the tank's control panel will automatically distribute 220 volts power to the miner. Please note that a nice weight is needed to start and stop the equipment in a safe way. Cooperating with the tank's own power button, the home and office users, a more user-friendly way as a single-phase power access, which the B6 tank also supports. For the specific access method, please refer to this picture. Each B6 tank has a built-in 8-volt industrial switch, and a network cable for the internal link to the miner has been configured. Just connect the external network cable. This switch has no routing capabilities. Close the top right cover of the B6 tank. When you have finished the network connector, it's time for us to connect the pipelines. This step can be skipped if you've already done when deploying a dry cooler. There are two pipeline interfaces on the front of the B6 tank. We put a nitro gasket into the pipe joints and then connect the pipelines to the B6 tank. It should be noticed that the left side is the outlet and the right side is the inlet of the coolant circulation. Clean your miner rigs and remove the fines of the miners first. Then install the miner handles where the original fine locates. Please note that for some certain conditions, a fine simulator is needed. We've got a detailed tutorial video teaching you the techniques of cleaning the miners, removing the fines, as well as installing the fine simulators. Please refer to that video for more information. Now put the miners into the B6 tank with the power supply facing the outside of the tank. Please study this figure carefully to make sure you put mining rigs into the tank in the right way. Next, to avoid splashing, use the oil pump to pump the coolant into the B6 tank until the coolant level is higher than the overflow group. We power up the B6 tank. While powering on, the tank screen will display the self-test status. At this time, click the button at the bottom of the screen to switch on the circulation system. When the circulation system is running, the liquid level will gradually drop and bubbles will be generated. 
At this point, we add coolant to the overflow groove until the coolant level in the overflow groove is lower than the liquid level in the tank and tends to be stable. Now the cycle debugging in the tank is completed. Time for us to start the external cooling system. And after four hours of operation, observe whether coolant leaks and whether the external cooling equipment operates normally. We go to the next step if all works properly. Next, connect the power supply of the miners. There are 12 2.5 square millimeter power cords built into the tank with C19 connectors. These power cables can be directly used with C20 miners. For instance, what miner rigs? You can also find 12 C20 to C13 converters in the accessories, which function C13 mining rigs such as ant miners. Click the Start Mining button, power on the mining rigs, check whether the internal miners are fully powered, and log into the mining configure page. When the miners start to work, the current coolant temperature and the mining status will be displayed on the screen. If you press and hold the screen button, the tank will stop the power supply to the miners, thus stopping mining. If the system encounters an issue, the screen prompts an error and triggers the buzzer, the miner and circulation system will be automatically powered off. Check and troubleshoot by following the prompts and then long press to enter standby state. Condition 1. The temperature is too high. When the coolant temperature exceeds the preset 72 Celsius or 161.6 Fahrenheit, the system will prompt an error and power off the miner. To solve this, Reduce the frequency of the mining rigs to decrease the heat generated by the miner or increase the cooling capacity of the dry cooler to reduce the system's temperature. When the problem is solved, press and hold the button to return to the initial page. Condition 2. Pump error. This indicates the pump failure or the lack of cooling fluid. Check if the pump sounds abnormal or if there is a lack of coolant. Condition 3. Liquid level error. There might be a shortage of liquid. I will not power off the miner and circulation pump. It is necessary to check for liquid leakage and add enough fluid. Short price returns to normally running state, and the system will determine that the problem still exists. Long price to return to standby state. Now have finished the deployment of the B60 AutoCAD.